Are you trapped in a state of perpetual worry? Are you struggling to stop worrying too much? Are you conscious of the spiritual, physical, and physiological hazards of worrying, yet you can't stop overthinking things? You literally worry over everything, even about your pet and old garden. Beloved, with God's help, you can stop worrying and trust Him more as He turns your worries around. Ensure you watch this video to the end and endeavor to open your mind to the endless possibilities that come with casting all your worries on God. Worries are hardly inevitable as they're common feelings that everyone expresses occasionally. The worries of life can make you unstable and distract you from your relationship with God, your career, your family, and even your marriage. Worrying is a slow way to kill your spirit. Constant anxiety has never contributed positively to anyone, rather, it steals from you. It steals your peace of mind, happiness, smile, health, and everything. But God is saying today is the end of it all. He promises to turn it all around if only you will let Him. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Worrying is like a heavy weight that you carry all alone, which gradually slows down your pace and makes you completely weak. This weight may be anxiety over the future, fear of what to do about it, or even trauma from the past. Just imagine the relief of setting down these weights or loads that have made your journey exhausting and your steps heavy. Imagine the comfort of walking freely and enjoying every moment. Imagine the joy and liberty of not having to worry about anything again. Still, they all fall in place. That comfort is what God has promised you. If only you will cast your burdens on Him because He cares for you. You cannot claim the positive things in God's Word as a blessing when you have a lot of negativity in your life, such as worries and uncertainties. Worrying shifts your perspective from the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God to a defaulted perspective. It puts you in a state of low self-esteem and a lack of faith in God because worrying is a clear indication of a lack of trust in your Creator. At the point where worries and uncertainties set in, you become prey for the enemy. Your mind constantly harbors thoughts that do not glorify God, therefore pushing you far away from Him. God has promised to sustain and provide for you as He does the birds of the air and lilies that grow by the seaside. His desire is not merely to see you survive all the storms and tribulations of life, but to see you thrive in the face of these challenges and emerge redefined. He can handle the struggles, obstacles, and uncertainties that have buried you. But you have a very simple price to pay. You must first seek His kingdom and righteousness, and every other mountain that has posed a challenge to you would be made plain. David, in the Bible, was a man of many worries. He knew what it meant to carry pressing burdens, as he had large responsibilities on his shoulders. But then, one beautiful thing about David is that he would always turn to his Creator at every trying moment of his life. David was a king, and entrusting his worries to God did not make him any less a king or weak. Rather, he did so that he could have his problems solved with so much ease and at no cost. By entrusting your uncertainties to God, you're not letting go entirely. Rather, you're giving him the chance to do something worthwhile about your situation. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. In this passage, God spoke explicitly about his intentions towards you. He clarified that his plans will always be good, so why worry? What could happen tomorrow or the day after tomorrow is not within your control. Stay in the present. The future is highly unpredictable and nobody knows what it will offer. It may offer joy or pain, happiness or sorrow, but the outcome remains uncertain. So why worry? 
Hope and trust are what God requires from you as you navigate the storms of life. He is always in the boat with you, though he may be silent, but the storms of life will never overshadow you on his watch. Daniel's story is not just proof of God's ability to save those who trust him, but a constant reminder of his reassuring presence. Daniel trusted in the Lord even in the face of danger. He would have shivered, but he knows the God he serves. He was not perturbed even when he knew the lions were very hungry and would instantly devour him at first sight. Yet he held on to God. At that point, his faith knew no limits and he was completely in belief. Imagine if Daniel had chosen to get worried that day. The story might not have been the same today, but he trusted God and was saved from the lion's den. Speaking of trust, Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Leaning on your own understanding might fail you as your foresight and discretion are limited. Rather, with God, you will walk the paths of destiny with clarity. God doesn't only care for his children, but he guides them into his abundant provision and perfect will. When you bring your burdens to him, you exchange them for all he has in store for you. The Bible says, if you, a mere man, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does he, your heavenly father? Your weakness is his strength, and your deficiencies are avenues for him to prove himself as God in your life. So if God has asked you to lean on him and quit worrying, what more do you desire? But if you keep worrying, logically, that is a sin of disobedience and rejecting of his blessings. On the night Jesus was nailed to the cross, he prayed and entrusted his biggest pain and concern over to God. He said, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet let your will be done, not mine. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. He trusted his father to handle the matter perfectly. He was anxious, no doubt. Besides, who would be aware that he or she would die soon and would not be worried? The death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary was for the greater course. He died for you and me. If Christ could cast his worries unto God, how much more you? Let go of the anxious thoughts, beloved. Surrender them to God and let him take care of them. Why does God want you to stop worrying, knowing fully well that He already knows and hears your every thought? Because He doesn't want you to focus on things outside your control. You can't control what happens tomorrow, but you can lean on the one who controls everything. He desires you to quit trying to do everything your way and allow Him to lead you in peace and tranquility. Each day of your life has enough troubles already to keep you bottled up, so why compound it with further worries? God, in His loving kindness, wants you to trust Him instead of ruminating on the wrong things all day long. He knows that you will not reach your full potential if you keep worrying about unnecessary things. Let go of fear of the unknown. Let go of fear of the past and hold unto God as your anchor. You can find safety and rest in God. He can give you a fresh start. He can restore your wasted years and give you a new beginning. All you need to do is hold his hand and take a step at a time. God wants you to focus your energy and time on the right thing at a time. Don't try to rush ahead of him and brood over things he has finalized. How can you stop worrying? Excessive worrying can lead to depression if not properly checked. So learn to regulate every impulse emotion that could trigger your worries. Learn to fall back on God as the first resort and not the last option in your uncertainties and worries. He will turn your every worry around and give you the strength to keep going. Stand firm in God and you will live an anxiety-free life. God can help you overcome worries and anxieties by His power and strength. You don't necessarily have to rely on your own willpower. You can rely on Him whenever you're tempted to worry and rest in Jesus instead of giving in to worries, which will affect you drastically. 
This will take practice, but in time, you can defeat anxiety with the help of God. So you ought to choose Christ today over the reoccurring anxieties in your life and watch Him turn all your worries around. You just have to give yourself up to Him in total submission. There will be times when your present circumstances look like a mountain. At such moments, trust that God will make a way for you. Don't allow anything to weigh you down. God won't forsake you. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 reads, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Run to him for rest, beloved. Find rest in his bosom. Another way to stop worrying is to dwell on God's word. God's word to his children is not just mere words, but words of encouragement and assurances of his unwavering love and promises to us. God's word is to guide you as you journey through life's uncertainties. Cease your worrying. Have faith. God will bring about a positive change. Trust in the process and remain hopeful for a better outcome. Let go of anxieties and believe that things will improve. Embrace the journey with a heart filled with faith and optimism. God's plan is greater than any concerns we may have. Surrender your worries and allow divine intervention to shape the outcome. Stay steadfast in your belief that God will guide you through challenges and transform them into blessings. Keep the faith alive and watch how things will turn around for the better. Do you keep getting faced with obstacles that look too big to overcome? Are you discouraged because you can't see a change in your life? Be at rest because something massive is going on behind the scenes. God is about to turn your life around and bring you a sudden visitation. Of course, there may be times when your challenges and setbacks are sponsored by the enemy. These are part of the things you must expect when God is about to turn your life around. But you can trust God in expectation of what you want, knowing that the devil can't stop it. He'll try, but won't succeed. Having this understanding will help you better navigate a few things that will come your way before your breakthrough appears. These are things you must expect. Some might already be experiencing these things and are beginning to doubt whether God will indeed fulfill His promises. But take heart, God has not forgotten you. He is not oblivious to all that you are experiencing. Rather, He desires you to shift your focus from them to what He has said concerning you. God is a specialist in doing breathtaking things. What He has in store for you is beyond your imagination. He controls the universe and has time in His hands. There's no limit to what He can do in your life. You're about to see the manifestation. Don't lose focus, beloved. Don't get swayed by those things you're seeing now. They're only temporary. That's not your reality. God's Word is your reality. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17 says, O sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. God can change your life instantly and reverse your challenges to give you a turnaround. The truth is God is already working to fix your concerns. You're the one who cannot sense or see that he has already started his work in your life. When God leaves hints of what He is about to do in your life, you must be able to quickly discern it so you can be aware of the season you're in and what He wants you to do as you expect your turnaround. Here are five things to help you know that God is about to turn your life around. Number one, more intense challenges. Difficulty is the first thing you'll face when God wants to turn your life around. You might notice a season where things become extremely tough in your life. When you find yourself in constant dispute and argument with your loved ones over minor issues that could be easily resolved, you must pause to reflect. If you also keep getting disappointments at your place of work or several opportunities that you took on, then God is setting you up for something big. All these are happening because the devil is against what God wants to do in your life. Psalms 30 verse 5 says, His favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. The devil will try all that he can to make you shift your focus from God by wearing you out with hard times. The enemy's plot is to make you unstable. 
so that you lose sight of what God wants you to do in the arrival of the change He is bringing your way. The devil can even attempt to utterly abort God's plan in your life, as he did with the birth of Jesus Christ. There was a prophecy that Jesus would bring salvation to mankind. This was the greatest breakthrough the world would ever receive. The devil tried to frustrate this agenda through King Herod in Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Mary and Joseph had to leave in haste for another country. The parents of Jesus must have been under pressure while making efforts to protect baby Jesus. Mary had just given birth as a first-time mother. She didn't have the time to understand motherhood or celebrate what God was about to do through Jesus because they were on the run with the little child. The story of Naomi in the book of Ruth chapter 1 is another great example. She went through so many trials of faith. Naomi suffered grief from the loss of her husband, Emelech, and shortly after, her two sons also died. Can you imagine the kind of pain she went through? She went from having a beautiful family to being alone in a strange land. But God was preparing her for a turnaround. He visited Naomi through her devoted daughter-in-law, Ruth. Ruth gave Naomi a new family, and she even got the opportunity to become a grandmother. The enemy tried all he could to stop her, as he will also try to do with you when you're expecting a visitation from God. What other thing can you expect? Number two people will begin to leave your life. Every time God is up to something good in your life, He changes your circle of friends. One reason for this is to prevent you from getting distracted from His will. When you find yourself in a situation where it seems like you're no longer on the same frequency with people around you, because of the things God is revealing about your future, you have to watch out. What you will start to see next is the exit of certain people from your life. God cuts off the people He doesn't want you to keep relating with because they're not the right people to help you flourish in the new place He's preparing for you. Now, if most of these people are not Christians, they will misunderstand you because they can't discern the process God is taking you through. You can also experience mockery, similar to the case of Jesus. The Jews and Pharisees made a joke of things He said because they weren't sensitive to what God was about to do through Jesus. So when you notice a switch in the attitude of your friends because you're doing things that please God, you're about to experience a change of story. Number three, temptations. God is righteous and he cannot stand sin. That's why the devil always suggests things that lead you into sinning against God. He's aware that sin has the power to stop you from receiving from God. When you notice you're struggling with self-control, especially over things that you usually have discipline over or a heightened desire to do the things God said you should not do, then the devil is about to stop you from your turnaround. The devil also sets up vices to make you sin against God. He might start to stir up anger in you so that you'll react in a way that displeases God when someone offends you. When you start having ungodly thoughts about sexual immorality to the point of engaging in the act, you must become vigilant because your enemy might be trying to steal your miracle. Number four, impatience. God wants to give you the best, which explains why he takes his time to make it a perfect gift. That's why blessings never bring sorrow, but joy. God always brings your turnaround at his appointed time not when you think it should be. When your turnaround is near, one thing that you can experience is impatience. It's the state of intolerance, especially towards delay. You'll start to get impatient with God's timing and think God is wasting your time, especially if you've done everything God has asked you to do. You have to be conscious of this because the devil can take advantage of your eagerness and lead you down the wrong path. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12 says, There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. The devil can camouflage danger and present it to you as an opportunity just to get you to go against God's will for your life. And you might end up falling into the devil's deceit because of how eager you are for a change. So please watch out. Lastly, you can expect doubts. Faith is the channel through which you receive anything you desire from God. It's important to note that the extent to which God can work in your life highly depends on your level of faith and His ability to do what He says He will do. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 
And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. This means that even though God has the power to change your life, your faith can limit His work. Most of the Jews and Pharisees in the Bible could not receive the wonderful gift of salvation that the death of Christ brought because they clouded their hearts with unbelief. So when God is working to bring your transformation, the devil will start to fill your heart with doubts. You will start to lose your faith in God at the time nearest to your miracle. When you keep having anxiety about your future, the devil is trying to attack your faith. You might have to face seasons of distress before God allows you to enter into the beautiful life that God is preparing for you, but you can choose to stay in faith and hold on to God's promises over your life. You must seek God's help to resist temptations. God can give you the strength to say no to negative thoughts and desires anytime they come. You also have to spend time in God's Word and prayers to tame the desires of the flesh. As you consciously work in the Spirit by praying, you will always overcome your fleshly desires. You must learn to stop seeking other alternatives as you wait on God. You must believe He is working behind the scenes when you can't see anything. You must learn to stop comparing yourself to someone else who didn't have to wait as long as you to get their miracle. You must understand that God works with each of us differently. He is the master planner, and He has a reason for everything He does. Let's look at two events in which God worked at different times. In a wedding in Canaan, where Jesus performed His first miracle by instantly turning water into wine, the guests were served premium quality wine without having to stress. At the same time, God made Abraham wait for 25 years to have Isaac, a promise God made to him. Does it mean that God couldn't give Abraham a son immediately? And the answer is no, because God can do anything. He took Abraham through these trials for a reason. He will always bring his word into your life to pass at the set time. Are you stuck in a very tough situation and think there can't be a change anymore? Looking at your life, you can't see any better days ahead. You've given up and want to end it all. Do not do that, beloved. God is about to step in right now. I know you've heard that a hundred times, but this message is a confirmation from God telling you to hold on as He is realigning everything. He is about to turn your tears into the best wine ever. Oh, what a glorious God. Child of God, your days of tears, mourning, and depression are over. Sir, God is saying you are taking your rightful place. He is restoring your wasted years. Ma'am, God has just opened the book of remembrance over your life. He has seen your struggles and pain. I don't need you to believe it because not even your disbelief will hold him back. He is ever faithful to his word, even in our unfaithfulness. You might be wondering how and when he will do it. Really? Have you suddenly forgotten that it doesn't take God 24 hours to send you a helper or change your story? Have you suddenly forgotten it takes only a word from God to call forth abundance and heal that sick family member? It doesn't take God a minute to orchestrate a solution to the most impossible situation in your life. If I were you, I'd pause this video and begin to worship God because your testimony is a done deal. He is about to make possible what was impossible in your life. Perhaps you've lost hope that nothing new can blossom in your life again. Beloved, stop those negative thoughts. God is about to turn your life around. Is this hard for you to believe? Maybe, but that won't change this truth. God is ready to raise you and turn your situation around for the best. God can do all things. Does that sound too basic to you? I know you've heard it several times and it's become a cliche with no impact to your ears, but that won't reduce his mightiness. Jeremiah 32, 17 says, Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. That sickness is not too hard for God to heal. Your financial status is not too difficult for God to transform. 
Your marital status is not too stringent for God to change. Your life is not too terrible for God to use for His glory. You may be in debt now. God is ready to pay them all. A wind of divorce might be rocking your home. Beloved, God is about to calm that storm. The enemy attacks you day and night. God will deal with them all day. You're still wondering how. First, you need to know that God loves you. You are precious in His sight. Hence, He will do all He can to rescue you. When you come across a young man and woman in love, you will see that they are always ready to do anything for themselves. That's how it is with God. He is ready to do anything because of His love for you. And what did you do to merit this love? You did nothing. God chose to love you from the foundation of the world. Similarly, He has chosen to turn your life around today. God has a great destiny and purpose prepared for you. This is another sign that God will turn your life around. You are not a mistake. God created you for a purpose. And whether the devil likes it or not, you will fulfill that purpose. David was in the bush, taking care of his father's sheep. But God knew there was a destiny for him to fulfill. So, he used the bush to train the young boy for one battle that would turn his life around. When David approached Goliath, he didn't see a giant like other soldiers. Instead, he was seeing another species of bear. Why? God had prepared him for his purpose, and he did fulfill it. Let this be your consolation today. You may be in the bush of sickness, financial difficulty, and delay. Do not lose hope. God is preparing you for a great future. At the appointed time, He can turn everything around in a twinkle of an eye. It will be like a dream. I don't know what you have done in the past. Once you confess that Jesus is Lord over your life, God has erased them. For that reason, you are due for promotion. You are on your way to the next level of your life. You need to forgive yourself and look forward to the glory ahead. The Bible has assured you that you are a new creature since you gave your life to Christ. God has extracted the old things from your life. Everything about you is new. Yeah, new. So endeavor to walk in that reality. But then, do you believe that God can change your situation? Do you believe in miracles? In the book of John 4, 46-51, the Bible tells us that Jesus returned to where he had turned water into wine. Then, a royal official in the land told Jesus that his son was sick. He wanted Jesus to follow him to his house and lay his hands on his son. But Jesus didn't. John 4, 50-51 says, Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. The man wanted to know if Jesus was the healer or if it was only a coincidence. So he inquired to know when the healing happened. His servant told him that it was in the afternoon. Behold, that was the same time that Jesus declared the healing of his son. First, God turned the life of the official's son around. Then he transformed the whole household. They all became believers after this event. However, this miracle happened because of one thing. The man believed Jesus' word. Therefore, I need you to believe Jesus today. Yes, you can't see him, but he has sent his word to you. He is right there with you. He can perform the miracle of healing in your life like he did to the official son. You might think it is impossible, but with God, nothing shall be impossible. He did it yesterday, and he can still do it today. If you stand on his word, you will receive your healing and help from above. Perhaps something is dead in your life, and you don't believe it can be resurrected again. Your business might be dead. A part of your body might not be functioning anymore. Listen, God wants to give life to them today. The Bible says that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Therefore, he will restore life to you. Every good thing that is dead in your life will rise again. In the book of Mark 5.23, Jairus, a synagogue leader, ran to Jesus, crying that his daughter was on the brink of death, and he wanted Jesus to come and lay his hands on her. Jesus agreed and followed him. But when he was going, another miracle happened. 
A woman who had been bleeding for 12 years touched Jesus and received her healing. Jesus paused, identified the woman, and told her that her faith had made her whole. While he was still speaking, people ran to Jairus and delivered the news of his daughter's death. Thus, it looked like Jairus didn't need Jesus anymore. But then, Jesus told him to only believe. He followed Jairus to his house and told the people wailing outside that the child was only sleeping. However, the people mocked him. Jesus entered the house with the child's father, mother, and his disciples. He took the child by the hand and told her to get up. Mark 5.42 says, Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. This is evidence that Jesus can raise the dead things in your life. Just as Jesus surprised Jairus' family, he will surprise you today. If he can raise the dead, there's nothing he can't turn around in your life. When will this happen? God will turn your situation around at the perfect time. You must not be in a hurry. God works in time and seasons. He might be preparing you now for the breakthrough ahead. But one thing is sure, God will never be too late. He is always on time. When He turns your life around, you will testify that it's the perfect time. Nonetheless, some things can stop God from turning your life around. You need to know and desist from them. The first of them all is sin. Beloved, you can't be in sin and expect the grace of God to be abound in your life. It won't happen. So avoid any sin that can stop your breakthrough and healing. Keep yourself holy and pure. When you do this, God will never leave you to walk alone. He will perfect the journey of your life. Also, desist from unbelief. God will still arise for your sake no matter your doubts, but many good things might not materialize in your life until you sacrifice unbelief. It's like enjoying 40% of all God has for you. God might have given you a bright idea that will catapult you to the next level of your life, but you haven't used it because you are skeptical about taking risks. The woman with the issue of blood had no idea to touch Jesus' clothing. She believed such a simple act would deliver her from her 12 years of trouble. This is a massive faith. No wonder her healing was spontaneous. Do away with your unbelief and grow in faith. Another thing that can stop God from turning your life around is disobedience to His Word. You can't disobey the Word of God and expect Him to act in your life. Specific instructions are in God's Word, and God has structured these instructions to change and keep your life in order. So when you disobey them, you are putting your life in jeopardy. That takes us to what you need to start doing for God to turn your life around. First, you must obey all instructions keep all His commandments and watch Him perform miracles in your life. Also, you must have absolute faith in God. Don't trust in men to help turn your life around. They will only fail you. You must trust God. Jairus trusted Christ and his daughter came back to life. Trust Jesus and your life will never remain the same. Lastly, start rejoicing. Don't wait till you see the manifestations. Let your faith be more than your fears. Raise an altar of praise over that pain and watch how God transforms your life. He said in Isaiah 42:16, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. That is the promise of God to you today. God will never forsake you. He will turn your life around for the best. Perhaps you're in a situation that isn't pleasing or convenient, and you don't know what to do to turn things around. You're in such a tight situation and don't know how to get yourself out. Fret not, you're about to discover a powerful secret that can turn your situation around. I like to call it the four P's of triumph. We'll discuss each of them and search the scriptures for people who applied these secret keys in turning their lives around for good. The first P is penitence, which also means repentance. Sometimes you are thrown into a tight corner due to disobeying God's laws. That awful situation might be overpowering you because of your wrongdoings. Sinning against God has its repercussions. 
When you sin, God takes his hands off your life and watches you go through the motions all by yourself. Sin creates a hole in the covering of protection that God has put around you, making you vulnerable to the evil wiles of the enemy. Check your life now. Do you have any hidden sins? If yes, what should you do? First, acknowledge that you are the cause of your problems. Then, go to God with a humble and repentant heart and plead for his forgiveness. A broken heart and a contrite spirit, God will not despise. Once you do this, God takes you into his arms and repairs the damaged covering. This blocks every access of the enemy and protects you once again from his attacks. And when this is done, your situation takes a new turn for good in the physical. A perfect example of someone who showed penitence is the prodigal son in the book of Luke. The prodigal son came to his father and requested his portion of the inheritance. He got it and journeyed to a faraway country. Things seemed to go well with him for some time. But later on, things took a downturn quickly and he found himself stranded in a strange land. He had nowhere to go, no food to eat, wore rags and desired to eat pig's food. The son of a rich man was wallowing in poverty. How pitiful. But that wasn't God or the enemy at fault. He was the architect of his own misfortune. One day he realized his foolishness. However, that alone did not solve the problem. The turning point came when he decided to take action. He said in Luke 15, 18 through 19, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servant. Therefore, he got up and went back home with a repentant heart. As he approached his father's house, his father saw him far off and ran to him. With a humble heart, he asked for his father's forgiveness. His father did not remember his transgressions. Instead, he forgave him instantly. He even requested that the servant dress him with the best clothes and accessories and kill the fattest calf to celebrate his return. In minutes, he regained his lost possession as a son. His life turned around for good. Hence, no matter how far or how long you've wandered away from God, he awaits you with his arms open. All you have to do is get up and return to him. He's steady to embrace you. And faster than you can imagine, there will be a great turnaround in your life. The second P is prayer. Prayer simply means talking to God about anything and everything. It means getting on your knees and voicing out all the hurts and sorrows in your heart to Him. Prayer gives you the avenue to tell Him about the situation you found yourself in and everything that has gone wrong in your life. Then you can ask Him to step in and make a change. Listen, this is not a one-time prayer. For God to change your situation, you must be consistent and pray with intense agony. You must persevere in the place of prayer. Even if it does not make a difference, don't stop praying. You must keep praying until you see significant changes in your life. Remember, the Bible admonishes you to keep praying until your joy is full. Jabez was one of the men who prayed intensely until God changed his situation. His entire life was a life of sorrow. His situation had nothing to do with sin because he had been named the child of sorrow on his first day on earth. The meaning of his name stuck to him as his life became exceptionally difficult. Jabez knew that something was wrong with his life. Therefore, he called on God and expressed his grievances. 1 Chronicle 4.10 says, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. When you read this verse closely, you will discover that Jabez didn't just pray vaguely. Instead, he told God what he wanted in his life. That is a heartfelt prayer. Then the Bible records that God granted his request. His life was turned around and he became more honorable than all his brethren. How amazing. God can also turn your life around if you can pray a specific and heartfelt prayer. If there's a man to pray, there's surely a God to answer. All you have to do is get on your knees and start knocking on heaven's door. And don't stop until your requests are granted. The third P is praise. This is a gem that many people have been ignoring for too long. Many have not discovered the kind of power embedded in praises. They think we only praise God when he has done something great, like providing a new job, house, or car. They do not know that praising in the bleakest situations is most rewarding. Praise shows your acknowledgement of the awesome power of God and how He is abundantly able to turn things around in your favor. 
Praise invites God into your situation because the Bible makes it clear that God inhabits the praises of his people. Praise confuses the camp of the enemy and scatters them in different directions. Praise clears the way for God to step right in. During tough times, praising God might not feel like the most natural thing to do, but trust me, it is the most essential thing to do. If you think you have no reason to praise God, think about the great things he has done, is doing, and will still do for you. All these are enough to propel you into praise. And when you do this, you will see the supernatural hand of God moving in your favor. A very large army from three different countries rose against King Jehoshaphat. The king knew that fighting them was only a waste of time because the people of Judah were not as many in numbers nor strong as they were. Thus, the entire country was captured in a terrible situation. The people were all afraid and distressed. Then they all came together and called upon God, asking him to fight their battle. On the day of battle, Jehoshaphat chose men to lead the people in praises as they marched to the battleground. This must have looked stupid and puzzling to the people of Judah. But as they were praising God, God was busy fighting the battle on their behalf. In 2 Chronicles 20:22, 20, the Bible says, As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. God confused their enemies, and they ended up destroying one another. Jehoshaphat and his people won the battle that day without lifting a weapon. They won using the power of praise. You can now see that praising God right in that difficult situation might be what you need to get your breakthrough. And the last P is patience. You've confessed your sins, prayed, and praised God, but you still can't see anything spectacular. God has even assured you that he is at work in your life, but nothing seems to attest to this after days, weeks, and months. This is where patience comes in. Psalms 27, 14 says, Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Patience is the willingness to wait for your desire. Listen, patience is not just about waiting. It is having the right attitude while waiting. This means that patience goes beyond waiting for God to change your story. It is not waiting grumpily or murmuring while you wait. It is waiting in faith. It is waiting with the assurance that your change will come no matter how long it takes. Abraham was a man who showed the virtue of patience. At the age of 75, Abraham had no son. He went to God and God promised him that his descendants would be as many as the stars of heaven. However, he did not have even a single child at the time. 25 years passed before Sarah, his wife, conceived and gave birth to Isaac. And all those years, Abraham waited, holding firmly to the promise of God to him. There was no record in the Bible that Abraham once murmured against God or stopped believing. He waited, and he did that with the right attitude. As a human being, you will not always understand why God does some of the things he does, nor will you always understand how he chooses to do his things. This simply points to the fact that he is God. He is divine, and you are human. Your knowledge is limited, but he is infinite in wisdom. The Bible says that his ways are past finding out. You cannot possibly wrap your head around them, but you know he is working in your life, and his name is always the best. So I urge you to be patient and wait in faith so you do not run ahead of God's timing or fall behind. That would be disastrous. If you can be patient and wait on God to make good on his promise, you'll be glad you did. You have been given the key to transforming your situation. Begin by implementing the four Ps one at a time and watch things change around you. Rest assured that the Lord will always remain faithful. Amen. The Lord will never disappoint you. Amen. Being a child of God is an amazing experience that no one should miss. It grants you the opportunity to experience the blessings and goodness of God. People don't know that salvation isn't the only good thing about Christianity. It is just a doorway to a life of multiple breakthroughs. But... When these blessings are about to surface, it can be very difficult to know. Hence, you might miss out on them due to lack of preparation. The good news is that when God is preparing you for a breakthrough, there are certain things you find yourself doing. It is often said that darkness comes before the light. This is very true, and it is also applicable to your spiritual life. Sometimes, God allows you to experience difficulties to prepare you for your breakthrough. 
You must always have it in mind that these trials are not meant to harm you. Rather, they'll help to strengthen and enhance your growth. So, if you feel like you're in the dark, know you won't remain there forever. Embrace the preparation process so that you can better enjoy the light when it comes. The problem sometimes is your inability to recognize these challenges as a preparation phase. These signs may not be so obvious or glaring, but God puts them in place so you won't have to go through life in confusion or blindness. And if you're spiritually sensitive enough, you'll be able to recognize and leverage this waiting period. So, what are the things or signs you will begin to experience when God is preparing you for a breakthrough? Number one, separation from certain people and things. Imagine you want to fill a jar and realize it contains already dirty water. What do you do? Empty and wash it, of course. God also does that with his children in the spirit realm. There are certain people in your life that God keeps trying to separate you from. But the more he tries, the more you keep resisting. These people may be important to you, but to God, they are distractions to your breakthrough. Don't get it wrong. It doesn't mean they are the ones preventing your breakthrough. It means if that breakthrough comes while you still have them close, there'll be a problem. So, God separates you from them so you can focus. Do you remember how God separated Abraham from his nephew Lot? When God asked Abraham to leave his father's house for the land he'll show him, he didn't need to take Lot along but he did anyway. All the while the two were together, Abraham didn't experience the full dimension of the prosperity God had destined for him. Only when they separated did God begin to fulfill his promise to Abraham. He encountered God firsthand after this. Genesis chapter 13 verses 14 through 17 says, The Lord said to Abram after Lot had parted from him, Look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west, all the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go, walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. Did it mean that Lot was the reason why Abraham wasn't blessed? Of course not. But Lot needed to leave so that Abraham would focus. This might sound a bit absurd and confusing, because the two had a connection as family members. But you must know that nothing matters to God when He wants to manifest in your life. Once He sees that a particular relationship is hindering His plans in your life, He dissolves it. And this is not limited to relationships alone. It cuts across your possessions, the job you hold dear, fame, or even your financial achievements. If any of these tend to come out of God's purpose for you, you'll have to step aside. The most interesting part is that sometimes you can't even explain how the separation occurs. It just happens. So the moment you notice this, don't find it. Otherwise, you'll block your chances of a breakthrough. Number two, oppositions from people. When God is preparing you for a breakthrough, you will also face opposition from people. This can come in the form of mockery or even outright persecution. It is not going to be an easy thing to accommodate, especially when it's coming from the people you least expected. But as a Christian, when people mock and persecute you, it shows that you're on the right track. No wonder the Bible says it shouldn't surprise you when people mock you. Instead, you should take it as a sign of your faithfulness to God. Even Jesus himself faced mockery and persecution during his ministry, but he remained faithful and excelled in ministry. This pattern is evident throughout the Bible. Look at Job chapter 30, verses 9 through 12, which says, And now I have become their taunt, and I have become a byword to them. They loathe me and stand aloof from me, and they do not refrain from spitting in my face, because he has undone my bowstring and afflicted me. They have cast off the bridle before me. On the right hand, their mob arises. They push aside my feet and pile up their ways of destruction against me. This was Job's lamentation when tragedy befell him. He became an instrument of mockery to the people around him. Do you know why people mocked him? It is because, despite the pathetic situation he was in, his gaze was on God. You know, Job was a very wealthy man with a very beautiful family. and People must have envied his prosperity. So, when he lost everything, 
was an opportunity for them to make him feel his God had forsaken him. They never understood that it was a preparation phase for a breakthrough in Job's life. If people around you have made a mockery of the challenges you're facing, don't let it weigh you down. Instead, let the joy of the Lord be your strength because you know that the result will be magnificent. Number three, complete reliance on God. When God is preparing you for a breakthrough, He prompts you to rely on Him completely. During this time, you may feel like you are in the wilderness with no way out, and as you struggle to find a clear path, you rely on God and Him alone. Don't forget that God will always guide you if you rely on Him. When you've labored and you're so tired, He's waiting with open arms to embrace and give you rest. He's the only one who'll accept you when everyone else turns their back on you. When you realize this truth, you'll know that God is the only one willing to stand by you. Psalm 55 verse 22 says, Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Did you hear that? It is an assurance from God's Word. All you need to do is trust Him enough to cast all those troubles, tribulations, and trials on Him, and you'll find rest. Number four, a feeling of peace and confidence amid uncertainties. When you hear the word peace, the first thing that comes to mind is calmness and harmony, right? Well, it goes beyond that. If that is all about peace, then there's no way one can experience it amid struggles and uncertainties. Peace is simply evidence of the God factor in your life. That is, when God is present, no challenge or difficulty can make you go haywire. This peace and confidence accompanies your season of preparation for a breakthrough. This is what David meant when he said even if he walks in the valley of the shadow of death, fear won't consume him. Even though the circumstances around you seem uncertain, don't panic. Instead, hold on to the assurance that God is with you, and you are confident that He'll walk you through it all to a clear path. Do you doubt it? Remember how Daniel remained at peace and served God despite the warning not to serve any other God. The Bible never recorded that he panicked or hid to pray in fear of punishment. He always opened his windows while praying to God without minding the consequences. And to prove that God was with him, the lions didn't come near him when the people threw him into the den. Another example is King David. Even though he faced uncertainty and danger, he had a deep sense of peace and confidence in God. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 32 through 33 says, For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. This was David's confession and praise to God for delivering him. King David was able to trust in God's guidance and protection, even amid danger. That is a great example of what can happen when God is with you. He gives you peace beyond human understanding, even when your circumstances are uncertain. If you ever feel anxious or unsure about the future, just trust God. Besides, He has your future in His hands. Don't feel surprised when there's danger left and right, and you are not shaken. Of course, people will keep wondering what's giving you so much boldness. They won't know that such comes only from God. God is preparing you for a breakthrough and He doesn't want anything to distract you, hence the peace. He has a plan for your life, and if you keep holding on, you'll see the manifestation. Beloved, God is a loving Father, and He wants the best for you. That is why He always prepares you before your breakthrough. He does this to ensure that when it finally comes, you'll be able to handle it well. When you feel like you're not moving forward, remember that God is not done with you yet. He's planning a surprise for you, but you must remain patient for it to unfold. So, even when life feels like it's not going the way you want, it's because you don't know what's happening behind the scenes. But you can choose to surrender to God's plan and trust that He will work all things together for your good. As you do this, don't forget to pray and study the Word of God. They are the secret weapons that will sustain you throughout this phase. So. Create that solid communication pattern with Him while you await your breakthrough. It can be very easy to become discouraged when you face obstacles and setbacks, but if you know God's Word, it will encourage you. When it comes, you'll know it was worth every moment of preparation and waiting. So, keep your eyes on God and your heart open to God's leading. 
and watch as he brings your breakthrough to fruition. Amen. Are you feeling restless? Something is stirring inside you, but you're unsure what it is. You may feel like God is prompting you to take a new path, but you're not sure what that looks like or where it will lead, and you don't want to make a move without God's clear leadership. If that's you, ensure you watch this video to the end, as I will indicate some signs that God is leading you to a new season. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. This shows that man will never remain in a season forever. God will keep moving you from one season of life to another. It could be from the wilderness season to a season of preparation. It can also be that God wants you to start something new. But when God wants to move you into a new season, He shows you some signs. These will help you to know what God is doing in your life. So what are these signs? First, God takes you through situations that will prepare you for the new season. God had already anointed David as the next king of Israel. However, God knew David couldn't come into the season without the needed preparation. Therefore, he orchestrated a lion and a bear to teach him the act of warfare. He positioned Goliath before him and ensured he went through the cave of Adullam. All these were not pleasant events for the young man. However, God made him go through them because of his future. Similarly, when you are about to enter a new season, God will prepare you through thick and thin. You might feel the need to learn a new skill or take a training. That is God leading you to your new dawn. Also, when you have a consistent relationship with God, He gives you revelation, clarity, and wisdom. He begins speaking to you about the new season because He knows you will need His guidance. That's why it's important to have a relationship with God and seek Him daily to understand where He's leading you. God prepared Abraham and told him that he would give him a son. He had received the promise that he would become the father of many nations. But for this to happen, God built Abraham's faith and patience. He taught him how to depend on him alone. No wonder Abraham readily gave him back to God when God asked for the child. Why? God had already built his faith. Thus, Abraham didn't miss his destiny. He eventually became the father of many nations today. I don't know what God has shown or told you. Keep holding on because God is preparing you. You might not even be doing anything except studying your Bible. God is still preparing you with this. The next sign is that the doors of your current state begin to close. If the door seems to close on your current situation, God is leading you elsewhere. The Holy Spirit stopped Paul and his comrades from ministering in certain places. This was like a closed door to them. They wanted to do exploits for God. They want to win souls in that season, but God says no. Paul and his comrades remained in this state until Paul saw a man from Macedonia asking for help. Immediately, Paul recognized that God had launched them into a new season. So don't become afraid when God stops you from taking a step. Doors may be closing and nothing is working for you. Listen, God is behind the scenes. He keeps you waiting so that you can enter a new season. He has something bigger for you. This might even be what you've been praying for. I need you to know that you may not want some doors to close. That's because they are so crucial to you. For instance, you may lose your job or a relationship. These can be very painful to leave, but then you need to trust God. One thing you should do is confirm that he was the one who shut the door. Once you discover that it's from him, don't stress yourself. He has something better in store for you. He will lead you to a new door that leads to a new season. The third sign is that your desires and characteristics begin to change. Your likes and dislikes begin to shift. This can be a potent sign that something new is on the way. For instance, you may enjoy doing a particular activity in sports, fashion, or music. Suddenly your taste changes to something deeper, like business and politics. You still enjoy your fashion, music, or sports activities, but you're urged to invest more time in these new activities. This is God leading you to a new season. He's raising your hunger for something different to accomplish a purpose. He changes your desires because He wants you to acquaint yourself with your new season. So when you notice a shift in your behavior and mindset, God launches you into a new dawn. 
The Bible says that Gideon was hiding wheat from their enemies when the angel of the Lord appeared to him. From this, Gideon was probably a farmer, but when the angel spoke with him, calling him a mighty man of valor, his behavior and mindset changed to that of a warrior. He needed this shift because he was entering a new season. So don't shun off these newfound energies when they occur. Embrace them because you are about to enter a new level. Another sign that God is leading you into a new season is that he changes your circle of influence. This includes all your relationships, friendships, and connections. God knows what is best for you and whom you should walk with at different stages of your life. So when he's launching you into a new season, he cuts off those who will not help you and removes those who will hamper your growth. Some may not be necessarily bad, but it might just be that your interests and passions have changed. So as you move towards this new season, you begin to meet new people. They may not like who you want to move with, but God has ordained them to meet you. The next sign is that God confirms his word through other avenues. After God speaks to you, he will confirm his words through people you trust. He can speak through your pastor, mentor, or spirit-filled parents. Why is this a crucial sign? God wants to clear every iota of doubt and fear in your heart. Aside from human confirmations, God can confirm his instructions through a Bible verse or a psalm. With these confirmations, no one can deceive you with a fake prophecy. The devil will always send a counterfeit that looks like God. That's why you need a relationship with God and understanding his word. So he uses confirmation to let you know you heard him correctly. Another sign that God is leading you into a new season is that he tests you. God sometimes tests you to know if you can enter a new phase of your life. He wants to see if you have enough faith to stand strong. Therefore, he can decide to push a challenge into your life. This challenge will not lead to your death. Rather, it is to know your capacity. God wants to weigh you on a scale. Is this a wicked act? No. Before a student moves to the next class, he has to write an examination. This period is usually a very tense one for every child. Why? The result determines if they will remain in that class or move to the next. The same is true about God. He tests you to know if you can carry the burden in the new phase. And sometimes you might go through a difficult season of life. That's part of the signs that God is leading you forward. Psalms 35 says, Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. So if you're currently facing difficulty, take this as a sign that God is leading you to a new phase of life. Remember Naomi? She went through a difficult phase of life. She lost her husband and two sons in a foreign land. She had no choice but to return to Israel. Unknown to her, every step out of the foreign land was leading her into a new dawn. She became a grandmother in the twinkle of an eye, and she rejoiced forever. She went from mourning into joy. This can be your story. God will move you out of your season of pain and sorrow into the season of joy and peace. What should you do when you discover God is leading you into a new season? First, you need to trust God's timing. Isaiah 55, eight through nine says, "'For my thoughts are not your thoughts, "'neither are your ways my ways,' declares the Lord. "'As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So you might have seen the sign that God wants to move you to the next level of your life. However, don't expect it to happen when you wish. He is God and he decides your life. You might think it will take months, but God says it will take years. The best you can do is trust him. This is why you must not rest on the arms of flesh. Don't assume that God would use your rich uncle to elevate you. It doesn't always work that way. God might have even prepared a total stranger for the task. Also, you need to let go of your old patterns. When God prepares you for a new season, he has to eliminate your old habits to make way for new patterns. You can't go into your new season with practices from your previous season. If you've been a liar, it's time for you to reject that habit. Why? It can hinder what God wants to do in your life. Then you need to keep praying. This is paramount in this journey. Prayer keeps you close to God's heartbeat, making it easier to hear his voice. Seek and receive his wisdom and knowledge for your season. 
God is faithful in guiding you if you ask and seek Him diligently. Stay committed to His Word. That is how you can receive the wisdom you seek. He will also reassure you that He is with you. Psalm 23 says that His rod and staff comfort you. Irrespective of what you might face as God leads you into a new season, don't lose sight of His Word. Changing seasons can be challenging, but when God tells you to move, you must move. By staying in your last season, you're blocking your future blessings. When changing into a new season, the biggest thing to remember is that God wants what's best for you. You must trust Him and watch Him lift you high.